Good evening and welcome to the Reed Duffy Chronicles as we continue to explore the people and events that make living in Indiana such an enriching experience. For the record, I'm Reed Duffy. Now, on tonight's edition, we first travel to Columbus to meet a man who's retiring as head basketball coach of Columbus North High School. Apparently did a pretty good job. Fans in Columbus seem to like him, for he's stepping down after nearly half a century. He presents perhaps what the epitome of basketball is in Indiana. Bill's a, a Hall of Fame person and uh, just, a, just a real fine gentleman and a, and a scholar of the game of basketball. But far more important than that, I think, uh, is the impact during his entire teaching career uh, that Bill Stearman has had on kids. He is just the consummate gentleman slash professional slash coach slash father figure. Lofty tributes for a man who was 12 for 47 consecutive years in the what have you done for me lately profession of Indiana high school basketball coach. But Bill Stearman has worked exhaustively to earn every one of those accolades. The last 44 at Columbus North High School starting in 1952 when it was just Columbus High School where he graduated class of 43. People have been very good to me in Columbus. They've been very understanding when we've had bad teams and uh, very appreciative when we've had good teams. Many, many good teams, producing 35 winning seasons, over 700 victories and over 1,000 games, placing him third all-time behind Howard Sharp and Marion Crawley, and doing it all as a hometown lad, born in Columbus 72 years ago to hardworking parents Charles and Bertha Stearman, who encouraged his early passions for all things sporting. He was a star on the Columbus High School basketball team in the early 40s. After graduation, the Army and European theater action in World War II, Upon discharge, he entered IU, unable to crack Branch McCracken's talent-rich post-war teams, but turning to baseball as IU's resident third baseman, leading the Hoosiers to their only Big Ten baseball title. He passed up a possible pro baseball career to pursue his first love with the head basketball coaching job at Waldron High School, leaving its fans with warm and fuzzy feelings with a three-year record of 47 and 18, then coming home in 1952 to take over as basketball coach at his alma mater and getting Columbus fans very excited very quickly. When I came here, Columbus hadn't won a regional in 16 years, and we was able to win one the, the second year. Pretty soon, Stearman had Columbus fans beside themselves, scrambling for tickets in the 7,000-seat gym that now bears his name, with 27 sectional and 12 regional championships, back-to-back -back undefeated regular seasons in 1963 and 64, and two trips to the Final Four in 1964 and 1975. Only the state championship eluded his grasp, coming closest with his great 1964 team, led by center Jerry Newsom and guard Steve Hollenbeck, losing by four to Huntington in the semifinals as key players battled the flu throughout the week of preparation. It took me several years to get over that, you know, we were the best team. I, you know, we felt that in our hearts. All right, stop. Okay, now not, not a good job of not paying. Many attribute Stearman's success to the fact he has never stopped being a student of basketball, filling his summers with coaching seminars, clinics, and audiences with successful coaches to pick their brains on innovative ways to surprise and torment his opponents. He was one of the first coaches to use the spread offense. We did a lot of fast breaking. We did a lot of isolation, which just wasn't done back then. When Bobby Knight went to the motion offense, Stearman had it here within a year. We did a lot of full court pressing, uh, a lot of man-to-man -man pressing. He just loves basketball, and he loves working with the kids. Dave Horn, I Bill Russell, was. Reggie Frisch are among several season. former players who have passed on sons to Bill Stearman's squads. Knowing his concern for them extends beyond the basketball court and their basketball careers, as Columbus sports announcer Sam Simmermaker has observed firsthand for 37 years. The number of young men that he has literally rescued from the gutter are legion. I get a boy in Florida that calls me up ever so often. Uh, he, you know, he's been in a little trouble. He calls me to talk to me. And I worry about boys like that, maybe, that have gone on, you know, have gone on and, and, and still need help. And they just shoot him. Yeah. You don't have to worry about on a frigid Friday night in February, Bill Stearman has his 22nd and final meeting with Southport's 37-year veteran, Bill Springer, as they treat fans to 84 years of combined coaching expertise. Both hark back to a time when their discipline was tough, their practices tougher, their authority unquestioned, unchallenged. And both admit mellowing after skillfully navigating through four decades of tumultuous social changes as it applies to their kids. With Stearman worried today's relaxed discipline does not prepare today's students for the real world. If we're not careful, they're going to, they're going to come out of high school with a pseudo complex that life is easy. And they're suddenly shocked with the realization that life is tough. 
As Bill Stearman's coaching career comes to an end, he has been treated to unending ceremonial tributes, but whatever satisfaction that brings is tempered by the fact that his wife of 46 years, Margaret, cannot be there to enjoy it with him. Confined to visiting her each day in a nursing home where she endures Alzheimer's disease diagnosed three years ago. Their only child, Billy, played for his dad and is now an attorney in Indianapolis. They were married the same year Stearman launched his coaching odyssey in 1949 with Marge helping fashion a family atmosphere with the players and their families but now leaving Bill Stearman with a regret shared by many a successful coach as it applies to even the most supportive and understanding spouse. They're always second. They're always second. Your basketball, which is wrong, it was always first. If I had to go back and do it over, I'd change that. The concept of retirement does not wear well with Bill Stearman. Part of his decision is based on a very painful right knee that might have to be replaced after putting it through too many vigorous games of hoops, baseball, tennis, and racquetball. Not to mention all those trips up all those ladders to cut down all those nets after all those sectional and regional championships. Stearman has always confined himself to five hours sleep to make sure each moment did not go idle. Did I mention he taught math and phys ed all this time? Was Columbus baseball coach for 38 years and its athletic director since 1954 and will remain so for another year? Time. I'm worried about time on my hands and not a goal that's pushed me. But one suspects Bill Stearman's retirement may be busier than he thinks as he passes on his basketball scholarship to others and hearing from former players, coaches, and fans stopping by early and often to say, Thanks, Coach. And the only person who may not be inclined to thank Bill Stearman is the young coach called upon to take his place. For Bill Stearman is the quintessential tough act to follow. Coming up, we travel to Dublin, Indiana, not Ireland. My travel budget isn't that big. To meet a Hoosier antiques dealer who's gone Hollywood on us.